Within Minecraft, there are several materials that are considered endgame by many. Diamonds, gold, netherite, wither skulls, you name it. With the create mod and the ultimate factory add-on, we can automate all of those. In the last episode, I automated gold, among other things. Tough makes a lot. In this episode, I automate a ton more, including better tree automation, diamonds, and even netherite. I am Bedrock Burger, your local bitter blossom enthusiast. As with every video I make, I say this, subscribe, you know you want to. Now let's begin automating the endgame in the create mod. Resuming my journey into this world, I had a checklist of deeds to complete. There's a good amount I wanted to do, but first was to automate wither skulls. If you've been following my channel for a bit, I already made a video on this a few weeks ago, and a short even further back. I don't want to retread any ground, so I'll summarize it very quickly. Cobblestone generators. Haunt the cobblestone into blackstone. Mill the blackstone produced to have less than a 1% chance to make a wither skull. Profit. The big struggle with this factory was that I kept running out of andesite alloy to make all the materials. So my next project on the list was andesite alloy. In the previous episode, the tough automation I set up conveniently produced iron nuggets and flint, two materials I needed to make andesite alloy. The main struggle with this build was that I didn't have a lot of space, so I had to improvise, putting a lava generator underneath the tough automation. But why lava? Well, it's actually simple. To make andesite alloy, you need andesite and iron nuggets mixed in a basin. To make the andesite, you needed flint, which we also had from the tough automation, gravel, and a hair of lava to compact it into a basin. It was easy enough to make, but tough to squeeze into the small space I had left available. We start with a cobblestone generator, of which I'm using the mod Create Cobblestone Generators, which adds cobblestone generators that use stress units to run. The cobblestone is crushed through a set of crushing wheels, making gravel. You can also use a millstone, but I use a crushing wheel because I had plenty. I have the gravel shot up through chutes using an encased fan on the bottom. They go into a buffer barrel, which then has a funnel on one end and a belt to have it be belted into a basin. The basin is where the flint I've been storing in an item vault goes. Lava gets pumped from below into the basin as well, where they get pressed into andesite. I made a small cauldron dripstone farm underneath to pull lava from. The andesite then goes on to another belt, where it goes around a bend due to space constraint into another basin. Iron nuggets from the item vault also get funneled into the same basin, and both get mixed to produce andesite alloy. This factory here made roughly a thousand an hour when it first started, which was very nice. It is very dependent on what the tough crushing produces though, and since I had a ton of iron nuggets stocked up, I was rolling in the andesite alloy. The production has slowed down, but as of my last time playing, I had over 12,000 sitting in a chest. Thank you, sophisticated storage. I'll have another video of this factory soon after this video releases, as well as a schematic on my Discord. I'll make sure it's all vanilla create though. With the andesite alloy done, I now never have to worry about it ever again. So on to the next project, diamonds. With the Create Ultimate Factory add-on, diamonds are automatable. It's not too tough either. In fact, we can make them out of thin air using trees. Allow me to explain. We have a simple tree farm cutting down any type of trees that you wish. Dark oak produces the most yield, but also takes in the most space, so I went with oak trees. You smelt the logs produced into charcoal using fans blowing the heat from lava to cook them. The next step is to haunt the charcoal into coal, blowing soul lava onto a belt containing the charcoal. When it becomes coal, you put it into a basin where it gets pressed into coal blocks, as coal blocks pressed together with lava, which I made another small farm for, makes diamonds. Nine coal blocks and a hair of lava for free diamonds. The main downside to this is that it's uh, kind of slow. Slow, but passive. I did speed it up later on, but you get the idea. Slow, making about a stack an hour roughly. But with that project complete, I just needed to start scaling up a lot of other things, so my next project was a new, bigger tree farm. The one I had now was fine, but I have projects in mind, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, and I needed the wood. I built it a bit off to the side on the mainland, quadrupled the size of the first one with the same sorter I used in the last one, but this time with a better sapling dump, putting them into composters instead of lava so I can get some return on bone meal. 
This new tree farm, when completed, was absolutely over the top, taking almost 5 minutes to do a full rotation and depositing up to a thousand logs at one time. The main issue is jungle trees, actually. Jungle trees have a much lower likelihood of producing saplings when those trees are cut down, so I had to go out and refill quite often. But this farm produced a staggeringly high amount of logs, sticks, and bone meal. As of when I last hopped on, it was sitting at over 130,000 of each log except jungle and over 5,000 bone meal. Over 160,000 cherry logs too because cherry grows at an absurd rate for some reason. Automation is fun. We're not quite done with the projects this episode as now we have netherite to automate, again using the ultimate factory add-on to make them from thin air. Basalt to netherite, let's see how. To start, a basalt generator. You can do this through the vanilla method using drills, or do like what I did and use the cobblestone generator mod. Put the basalt on a belt, and use soul fire to haunt it into netherrack. With the netherrack, funnel it into a buffer barrel, then use lava to smelt the netherrack into nether bricks. All of it gets pushed onto presses, where they get pressed into nether brick bricks. And then the fun part, crushing the bricks. They do crush down into nether bricks, which we dump, but they also have a less than 1% chance to make netherite scrap. It comes out to about a stack an hour, which is 16 ingots. Is it OP? Yeah, a bit. Am I okay with OP? Absolutely. With the projects I plan on getting into, OP is very good. Before the final project of this video, a multi-material one for lapis and quartz. This one is really easy actually, it took me about 20 minutes to set up. Make limestone, crush limestone, profit. In vanilla create, limestone is made by mixing honey and lava like it's a cobblestone generator. You can use a drill to mine it all. I'm lazy, so I changed the cobblestone generator from that one mod from cobblestone to limestone, installed a crushing wheel, and it was done. A brass tunnel to split the lapis from the quartz, chests on the end, and boom, automated. And with that, my checklist for this episode was complete, and it ate only about 10% of my power supply. In the next episode, we switch things up. I'm all set up, so it's time to build. I hope you all stay tuned for that. Thank you all for coming and watching. Bad Rock Burger, out. If you're still here, just a small announcement for this series. I am turning this Creed series into a brand new one, which I call Multiverses of Minecraft, where I take the landscape surrounding my humble island and change it into massive builds inspired by the worlds from the Magic the Gathering trading card game. I've been playing that game for years and years and years and years, actually longer than I've been playing Minecraft. I aim to have the first one of these videos in the new year, as large builds take a lot of time and resource gathering is intense. It's also the holidays, so time is limited. I'll have more updates for this build on my Patreon. Stay tuned. See ya!